So in my last video, I showed you the brand new ISHOW-2 satellite, which is in a geostationary orbit at 25 degrees east. Now, the ISHOW-2 has two transponders available for amateur use. And in the last video, I showed you how you can listen to the narrowband transponder using a web SDR. Now, since the last video, I've installed a 60 centimeter dish on my shed, which is now pointing the best I can towards ISHOW-2. Now, as you can see on the screen, the signals from ISHOW-2 are pretty weak. And in my opinion, this leads me to believe that there is one or more issues with my installation. Now here in the shack I have the coax from the LMB coming through the wall through a BIOS T and then into an RSP1 SDR receiver. The BIOS T is powered by a 13.8 volt power supply and the octagon LMB is drawing around 100 milliamps. Now as you take a quick look in my back garden on the side of the shed I've installed the antenna you can see the octagon LMB there on the right they're supposed to be better because they have a PLL and shouldn't drift as much they do still drift but once they've warmed up it should be okay now if you take a look here from the back of the dish you can see one of the issues that I have I have a whole load of trees in the way now I think this is a major factor of why it's not working very well now in this video I've shortened the coax and brought it into one of my other sheds and I've actually used a long USB cable and brought the SDR receiver and the bias T out into the shed. As you can see here I've got the USB cable, the coax from the LMB, there on the left we have the input from the power supply, the bias T which then goes down to the SDR. That's the power supply I'm using, it's 11.2 volts and it works perfectly fine. So as you can see it hasn't really made that much difference by shortening the coax cable from the LMB and then putting the SDR receiver in another shed. So I think the only other thing that I can try and do is maybe get a larger dish. Now I know come the summertime when there's leaves on the trees it's going to be even worse. So at the moment the dish that I've got is a 60 centimeter dish so I think maybe I'm going to try and get a larger dish. If you know anybody who wants to send me one for free to try please get in touch I'll be very grateful and uh, we can see if we can get the reception from SL2 a bit better here. Anyway, if you look on the screen here, you'll see two peaks, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the far left is the start of the narrowband first beacon. Now this is actually broadcasting CW and it's the ident for the actual satellite. We can go ahead and easily decode that. Now the beacon on the far right of the narrowband actually contains some digital data including telemetry and other special things about the satellite. We can use a program called AO40RCV which was originally designed for the AO40 satellite to decode what it's actually sending. So let's go ahead and have a quick look. I'm going to speed this up because unfortunately because I've got too much noise on the signal it took a while to decode but there's some interesting information that we can actually receive and decode including a message in a mailbox. Let's go ahead and have a look. So apart from information about the satellite's temperature and RF output power and angle etc we also get this mailbox message. Now this is the first message that's come through. It says hi the Quattar Oscar 100 DL50 AMSAT transponder is open for general use since 2019 to 14 so 14th of February. Enjoy the narrow band and wide band transponders. Follow the guidelines and keep transmitter power below beacon. For more information visit amsatdl.org QO100 was brought to you by SHOWSAT, Quas and AMSAT-DL Good luck, good DX via the first geostationary P4-A satellite Wow, that's actually quite impressive
even though that uh, my signal was not very strong I was still able to decode that message so there we go guys that's my experience so far of receiving s how to directly at my QTH now I do have some obstacles to overcome unfortunately I can't go ahead and cut down the trees so I think the only thing I can do is try and get a bigger dish maybe also install the satellite dish a bit higher if you guys have managed to do this yourself then please leave a comment down below in the description I'll be really interested to see if you've made any videos on this I think this is an exciting new project now once I've got the receive working 100% then I'll be moving on to transmitting that's right transmitting transmitting via the uplink on narrowband anyhow if you like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and until the next one you take care and we'll see you then